what are other things in people's toothpaste that they should watch out for? And I will just tell you this. I, I talked about this on the podcast. I had my blood taken and I was so high in triclosan. And I know triclosan isn't in a bunch of toothpaste and baby wipes. You guys got to be, there's a huge brand of baby wipes that it's in. Rhymes triclosan with, uh, was, I was, I, I mean, from when Colgate introduced their product total in 1998, they were actually going to launch it. They were going to call it the first antibiotic toothpaste. And then there was this, whole public you know, back, antibi- oh. call it an antibiotic toothpaste. Uh, and then they, they changed right away and they said, Oh, it's the uh, plaque killing, you know, toothpaste and everything in oral care has been about kill, 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 kill. baby, burn, burn, burn. <laughs> and it's like kill plaque, kill germs. And, you know, like you got to sterilize your mouth. What are these things we should look for in our toothpaste, the ingredients? Okay. So let's talk about what's bad. You know, there are things we've used in toothpaste a long time, which just are not sodium lauryl sulfate. It's what makes toothpaste foam up. Um, it actually is an irritant. It actually, they use they use sodium lauryl sulfate to irritate your skin to test dermatological, dermatological products. I don't mean to brag, but when Michael first started dating me, he was using Crest and I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we started dating when I was 20 years old. So we're talking like two Too decades. Too bad you used it for a long time. And I you was guys like, are married 20 years? I was no, like, we've been together for almost 20 years. Great. Not with that crest we don't. No, no, no. no, no. Good no. for you. Good. Okay. You were using no, two say, irritants and you you're know what, Wait, I need yeah. to go back to the ingredients to not look for. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. So what's bad in toothpaste? Um, what's bad in toothpaste is sodium lauryl sulfate. What's bad in toothpaste, of course, is fluoride. Um, it is. Um, so the, Procter & Gamble, I think, launched a product called... Um, Cold, uh, uh, Crest Sparkle. It was fluorescent blue, bubblegum flavored. I remember that. And it had sparkles in it. It is like any kid who was like five or, or under was like, it was like candy. I for sure had that. And fluoride fatalities in children went up like something like 280%. Was it blue? It was fluorescent blue. Yep. And I that fluorescent it. blue, by uh-huh. the way, it used to be coal tar made, a, made toothpaste that color. Now it's just petroleum and it is a carcinogen. I it, had like, it had like glitter number. in it, right? It had like glitter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah it had that. like glitter in it, and so like and literally, they put like a superhero on the on kids the were yeah. eating it, and they were there's enough fluoride in a full size tube of toothpaste, commercial tube of toothpaste, to be fatal to two children under five. Wow. So you don't have to even eat a lot. So the it went through, and then took the FDA typically um, ten years, and they came out with a poison, the FDA poison warning on toothpaste with fluoride says if more than a pea-sized amount, keep out of reach of children. I love that one. Let your kids brush with it, but keep out of reach of children. If more than a pea-sized amount is swallowed, call poison control right away. So kids were ingesting this toothpaste if they got their hands on it. And- yeah, and it still is a problem, kids eating toothpaste, you know. And, 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 you know, so I wanted to, the first thing I wanted to do, and it was around the time that I had been, I participated in those um, symposiums and complementary and alternative medicine. I remember saying, I've got to do two things before I leave the planet. The one thing I got to do is change what people brush their teeth with. And, and so that's how, that's what was behind the development of Revitin. It's like, you can literally take a pea sized amount. And, you know, my grandson has been eating this from six, from six years old. And it actually improves your gut microbiome, too. It's funny because this toothpaste was recommended to me about five years ago by Dr. Daryl, and I actually have my kids brushing with this toothpaste, and I didn't put two and two together that you're the actual inventor of it. Yes. It's an incredible toothpaste. I mean, just on the back here, it says fluoride-free, gluten-free, dye-free, GMO-free, sugar and xylitol-free, peanut-free. So you really thought of everything. Gluten-free, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send you a so, video of Michael brushing his teeth with his toothpaste because I know be, him so well. He's, well, already, that would be he's also, angling how to steal but it. This is so empowering because women, when they're pregnant, get something called pregnancy gingivitis. Oof. They can actually brush with this and use it on their gums, rub it on their gums at night and leave it on like a gum mask and go to sleep with it. And, do you and have, it reduces inflammation by 86% in two weeks. We've done double blind clinical studies. We've done genomic studies. We just... Fa- um, we just did a uh, double blind, randomized double blind clinical study, a genomic study showing how we make the microbiome, which when it's unhealthy is a thick, sticky film like you have on your teeth in the morning. That's why when you brush with this for a few days, you wake up in the morning, your te- teeth feel clean. No, like you I, feel like you don't have to brush. And, and I see here you have not, also vitamin C, D3, E, K2, all the things. And you prebiotics. And made yeah. in the USA. 